Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our service at New Bethel this morning on this Lord's Day. We're happy to have you with us to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning, whether you're with us in person or watching online. If you're watching online, please bear with us as we continue to improve our streaming broadcast, and we hope you will notice improvements that we're making from week to week. Uh, please see your bulletin for detailed announcements. There are a few uh, things that I would like to highlight. First of all, please remember those uh, that are on our prayer list that's printed in the bulletin. Uh, a, couple, a couple that are in Princeton Transitional Care right now, uh, Peggy Hodges uh, in room 603. She's due to have hip replacement surgery on Friday of this week. And also Ann <coughs> Frazier, who's I think right next door in room 601 uh, is there. And what is her status, the latest? Is she? Uh, she's is this, still improving the in quadrant thing okay. with her hip. Yeah. And she's going back for a recheck at the orthopedics this week. Okay. So I'll know more then. Well, no more <laughs> later on this week, but she's there there for, for a while longer. Anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, we want to remember these two as well as the others on our prayer list. Uh, do any have anybody else have anybody they want to mention? Uh, sickness or? Okay. Um, uh, a couple of other things. Many of you were able to participate in the birthday parade that we had for Tab Torbett last week. What a great time this was as many uh, were able to gather and drive by to wish Tab a happy 99th birthday. Um, in such a in, in a very different way. Uh, also, steps are being taken to prepare the manse for rental. Uh, we've met with Blue Ridge Properties, and they will handle all the details. So we won't have to be involved too much at all, other than uh, making a few preparations and and getting it prepared. But uh, we are looking forward to get this going and uh, and uh, go go further into this getting ready, getting the manse ready for, to rent. Uh, also, a reminder that Sunday school will be beginning on September the 13th. That's three weeks from today. Mary Lynn will be teaching, and we'll be using the book. Uh, we'll, we'll start where we left off. So if you have your books, just uh, that's the lessons we're going to be starting with. We have a lot of our friends that are celebrating special times this week, several birthdays. Uh, among the birthdays are Gary Dobervolk, Byron Barnes, Daniel Smith, and Jay Medital all celebrating birthdays this week. And celebrating anniversaries are Ma Ron and Marion Reed, Dickie and Eva Jones, and Jim and Teresa Wright. So congratulations to all those and hope you all have happy anniversaries and birthdays. Um, does anybody else have any announcements? Okay. If not, we will continue our service with the piano prelude and after that we will have a brief uh, moment of silent prayer as we seek the Holy Spirit in our personal time of worship. Oh yes, sorry, thanks for reminding me. I'm sitting here looking right at them, but <laughs> so used to seeing them, I don't really think of them as visitors, but we are uh, real happy to have our former choir director, uh, Donna and Mickey here today visiting with us. Maybe they'll be back more <laughs> since they've moved back to this area. But uh, we, we sh everybody's really happy to, to see them. So thank you for being here. Please stand for our choral hall of worship.
Join in our call to worship in unison. You who are many are transformed to become one in Christ. We who are many are called to worship God, the three in one. Let, Let us, us worship all worship God. God. Join me now as we pray. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, we come to praise you and to worship you this morning and to thank you for the many of life's blessings that you've given us. It was such a blessing this week to visit Tab as we gathered in a very different way to celebrate his birthday with him. Thank you for his life. He is such an inspiration to all of us in, in so many different ways. As we continue to adjust to the changes, we pray for our schools as they open. We pray for the students. We pray for their leaders and their teachers as they begin this difficult year of teaching all of those that are in various stages of their education. We pray for all those mentioned in our bulletin that have physical needs as well as spiritual needs this morning. We give you the glory and the honor for all that is accomplished as we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Confident in knowing that if we confess our sins before God and one another, he will forgive us. Let us join in our prayer of confession. Forgiving God, God we, confess we confess that we, that we are, are conformed to his world. We conform to this world's frantic pace, to, to the hectic to notice, to notice all the blessings you provide. You provide. We, we conform to this world's reckless waste. Exploiting what you entrust, entrust in our, our care. care. We, we conform to this world's shallow values, oblivious to the giftedness of the people different from us. We conform, we conform to, to this world's impatient attitudes, preferring the latest instead of the lasting. Forgive our conformity, conformity and transform, transform us, us, O God. God. We pray, we pray this in Jesus', Jesus name. Christ's name. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creature. The old life has gone and a new life has begun. Let us now praise God in song as we join in our opening hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken.
Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, Mary Lynn is going to come with our children's moment at this time. theme of this lesson is heaven will be amazing. I think so. The scripture is from Luke chapter 20 verse 36. And they can no longer die for they are like the angels. They are God's children since they are children of the resurrection. So how many of you like riddles? <laughs> yeah. Me too. Uh, have you ever heard this one? Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> to get to the other side. How about this one? Mary's father has four children. Nana, Nina, and Nini. What's the fourth child's name? Anybody? Mary. Mary was Mary's father. How many months have 28 days? All of them. Yeah. Some have 30 and some have 31, but they all have 28. What's full of holes but can't hold water? Or but can hold water. Oh, said that wrong. Can hold water. A sponge. So riddles have been around since Jesus' time. I don't know if you realize that. But one day, Jesus was approached by some Sadducees. And Sadducees were the religious leaders at the time, but they did not believe in the resurrection or in heaven. So these Sadducees were trying to trick Jesus into agreeing with them that there was no resurrection. Um, so they asked him to answer this riddle. The law of Moses says that if a man dies leaving a wife but no children, his brother should mar marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name. Well, suppose there were seven brothers and the oldest one married and then died without any children. So the second brother married the widow, but then he also died. The third brother married her, and this continued until all seven brothers had married the same woman. And finally, the woman also died. So tell us, Jesus, they said, whose wife will she be after the resurrection, since all seven were married to her? So that's kind of a tricky riddle. And this is what Jesus said. Marriage is for people here on earth. But in the age to come, those who are raised from the dead will not marry or be married. So when I lost my husband, this was a very hard concept for me. Because, you know, everybody, well, you'll be reunited one day. And, you, and we will. I do believe that. But we will not be married. Because there is no marriage in heaven. But... When you are gone to heaven, you will never die again, and you'll live forever there as a child of God. I think that is a fabulous, fabulous thing. One more riddle. Why were those people, those religious leaders in the Bible called Sadducees? Well, since they didn't believe in the resurrection, or the happiness of heaven. They were sad, you see. Let's pray. Dear Father, we are so happy today that you have promised us eternal life in heaven. And we thank you that heaven is going to be amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to this blessed day that God has given us. The opportunity that we might enter into his house, gather together as one in Christ, and lift up our hearts, our minds, and prayers to lift up our souls in worship and gather together as friends and members of one church our church, Jesus' church, shall we pray. Father, Lord, we gather with you today, here in this house, lifting up our voice, that we as your children might confess our sins, might profess our love for you, might share humbly from our hearts that which you have done As we enter into this house today, Lord, we come praying for our friends and neighbors throughout the community, here within the church, here within the country, and throughout the world, that your hand and your spirit may help us as we continue to try to overcome this virus that has changed our world this year. Father, we also pray for the men and women that are on our prayer list. You know their needs. You know the unspoken prayers that are within the hearts of those that are here today, those who are watching online, and those perhaps who are unable to be with us today. We ask that your spirit guide and fill and nurture and provide for them. Father, as we enter into this house today, it is our desire to lift up our voice as one body in Christ to you that we humbly come and enjoy ourselves as worshipers of the blessing, of the love, of the guidance that you have given us for each and every breath that we have received, for all that you 
have given to nurture, provide, and delight. Father, as we come to you this morning, we also pray that we hear your word and allow your spirit to teach us and guide us within our hearts. These things now we pray in Christ's name. Amen. It is good to be here this morning with you. It is good to read some of these scriptures. Psalms this morning, 138. The words of David, let us hear. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your solemn decree that it surpass your faith. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of all the ways of the Lord. For the Lord, uh, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the low. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the angry of my foes, and with your right hand you save me. Lord will vindicate me. You love, Lord endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Our second scriptural reason, one that Paul writes to us this morning, about living sacrifice and the humbly, humbled service of the body within Christ, which comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifices. Holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all of the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Thus ends the reading of the scripture this day. 
I must say that of all scriptures that are written, this one with Paul in Romans uh, has many different sermon possibilities. But today, I'm really focused on verse 5. I know it's kind of hard to imagine, but as it says, so in Christ, we, not you, not I, we, though many, form one body. Paul writes the word we, we the church, we the people, we the individual that are a part of the church. We who have gifts, we who are from believers in God, we who read and interpret the word and understand the teachings, we who do not conform but are transformed. We are the people that God has working within the world. Now, the second word that I'm playing off of today is the living sacrifice. It's hard to ignore. God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Well, now, I know that our day and time, sacrifice has a total different meaning than what Paul was writing about. We don't dissect up animals today and burn them over a fire in order to change our sin. Christ died on the cross for that. So living sacrifice today has a, a new meaning to the church, to the body. For many of us, that nuance of living sacrifice truly really comes from the capital values of who we are today. We believe that the sacrifice comes from time or money. But you have to go a little deeper into the scripture to understand what is being written here, to understand the sacrifice that he's calling for. Yes, time is important. Yes, money is a part of the gifts that we can share. However, it involves the one thing that most of us don't like to give, the physical. The physical action of being a working part of the body of Christ of the church, of the function that takes place just to make things happen day in and day out, to be a part. You know, in verse 2, it says, do not conform to the patterns of the world. Thomas Iniquitous writes much from the part B which says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. His terms were summa contra Gentiles. Roughly paraphrased, one should not allow themselves to fail by not understanding. Thomas said that we must go deeper into the word. So when I share with you this morning, we include you all. When Paul writes we, he is describing a functioning body of the church of Christ in the similar fashion as to who we are today. And so I want to take just a moment, just a moment, 
to help you realize what's taking place right now. For those of you that are watching online and those of you who are in the room today, you may think you're just sitting there listening. You may think that you're just sitting there watching. But the body's doing so much more. The body is helping you to continue to function. The muscles are affixed so that you can sit in the position that you're in to hold your head in the position that it is. Your immune system is working to protect you. Your blood vessels, your arteries, your veins, your hearts, everything is working harmoniously together to ensure that your eyes and your brain and your ears are able to function. And yet, there you sit. There you are watching on the screen. But there's a lot going on. A lot that's going on behind the scenes. And that's where Thomas takes us into understanding being transformed by the renewing of our mind, being transformed by reading the scriptures and breaking down the meaning of the words, transposing the Greek and the Hebrew, understanding the definitions, the dialect, and the way words are used in certain conditions. These are the premises of developing a theology in our lives. One in which Paul writes that we should understand. So when he says making a living sacrifice, he's suggesting that we break down ourselves much like you would cut up the animal and dissect it and use it. He's suggesting that we understand each incremental function within the church, each incremental teachings of the church, and to do it, and to do it good. Many of our churches today are closing, sitting empty, not functioning. Now we can blame a virus. We can blame the world, governments, but we, not this building, though it's a beautiful building, and it gives us an opportunity to gather and be with the Lord we, the body, we, the church, are here and there. You are the church. You are the body. You are the function that takes place. When he says, I encourage you then to give. Give, if that's what you can do. Do it generously, if that's what you can do. If you have the gift of sharing God's love, share God's love with blessings. Be outspoken about who you are, who your Savior is, if that is your gift. If you can pray, pray. That's a powerful gift that others may not see. But as I suggested this morning, all of you are doing quite a bit. On the inside, it's very noisy right now. But on the outside, you hear me. You see me. But you continue 
to do what is necessary. And that's what Paul is writing about. To be more. To be the church. To discern the words of God. To break down the terminology, the definition. To read the scripture. To be sober in your judgment when it comes to how the world is today. It's very easy for us to say, well, I believe this or I believe that or I think God would do, but that would be a worldly way, wouldn't it? That would be a choice of using what I believe, my opinion, rather than teachings. Paul is suggesting that we reverse that so that we're not failures, that we transform instead of being conformist. People would like for our churches to be empty. People would like for our children not to understand who Christ is. And it's very easy sometimes for this to happen because we have become a society that says we're not one member who belongs to all, but we are humans and individuals that must make choices. There's the stumbling block, isn't it? Well, everybody has to choose. Everybody has to make a choice. How do you make a choice when you don't understand the choice? I can have a whole menu of different ice creams on a board somewhere, and I can walk in and if I see chocolate, I know what chocolate tastes like. If I see vanilla, I know what vanilla tastes like. But if I see something that says mocha something, I have no clue because I drink coffee black. I don't know what mocha means. I don't know what frappe means. I could look it up. I get it. You know, but that's the point. Paul's saying, we have a choice. Learn. We have a choice. Transform. We have a choice. We, rather than I. Yes, I can stand in front of the menu and I can read it, but if I don't understand it, if it's a fruit I've never heard of, a nut that I've never heard of, how is my brain to process that? Paul writes that we are all members of one. We all belong together. Just as our physical body belongs together, works together, functions together. If you're a cancer patient, you learn that there is an immune system very much like the blood system. That's totally different. Has total different chemicals that works within the body up and down and throughout that just takes care of the bad things and keeps us healthy. The blood system takes care of the oxygen and all the nutrients and things and carries it through. The stomach works. All these different individual little bits and pieces within our body, we don't consider. We don't think about it. It just happens. But we believe that it's doing right, that it's doing good, because we understand how we feel. 
we can make a choice on chocolate because my tongue has told my brain through the pathways of God's blessings of neural nets and all the other things that might take place within the cellular structure of my body that somehow I can process the actual flavor and taste. Paul says that we need to break down that word. Thomas and Nicholas wrote 12 books in the early centuries just to help the churches not fail, but to understand how to be one in Christ, to overcome the unbelievers. The unbelievers is the moco, floppy, whatever. I'm sorry. The nuts that I don't know the names for. The fruits that I don't understand. We have to learn. We have to learn what it is. Now, I know today most people would just Google what's up on the menu and it would tell them what, a description and maybe the brain can process that. But how do you process <clears throat> a gift from a deity who has sent to this world through the form of a virgin mother, a birth of a child who lives among us, who walks among us, breathes with us, becomes a part of our community, is denied, is believed to be bad, nailed upon a cross. How do you tell a non-believer all this makes sense? All this is important to you. How do we transform the information to be as simple as John 3.16? To be as simple as understanding that we function as one. To be as simple as knowing that on the day that he arose and the tomb was empty. That the birth was important. that the Holy Spirit works within. I prayed this morning that the Holy Spirit would touch you inside. What part of the Holy Spirit touches you? Is it in the brain, the heart? Where does God allow that gift to work? Where is God's gifts within you? Is it in the physical? Is it in the mental? Is it in the ability to function? Where is your place within the body of Christ? This is the teaching that Paul writes about. This is who we're supposed to be. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Not chopped up parts, but as living sacrifices, functioning to make all better, not just yourself. We have to transform from personal self-esteem, personal gain, personal choice. So how do I help Mary Lynn or Becky or Larry or any of the others here today or those that are watching 
online? How do we become the body in function? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, you give us many gifts. You give us so much love and so much blessing within our lives. We don't realize, Lord, everything that happens moment to moment, second to second, because it's the blessings that you have given us. We breathe because you allow us. Our bodies function as you intended. We have opportunity, we have knowledge, and we can make choices. Hear us today that we, deep in our hearts, may learn to be transformed, to serve in the function that you call us to serve as a part of the body that works within the function of your church, the church in which your son has created. A function of that which is dependent on the gifts that you give each of us. Father, allow your light to shine upon us Allow us to discern the truth, the way, and the peace that you offer through the joy of serving as one. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand as we do our responsive hymn number 84, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord find favor. And may he grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen.